This is a disco clam. Flash of the disco clam. Red frills and a flashy display make for a one-of-a-kind aquatic oddity. I study disco clams, that's their colloquial name. Some people also call them electric scallops or electric clams. They get their names because they flash. They have about 40 eyes. They like to live inside crevices or holes inside the reef. They have tentacles that come out, sort of sensing feelers. They're the only bivalve, actually, that has any sort of flashing display. It's a pretty interesting phenomenon. This is the saltwater aquarium room where we keep a lot of the organisms and also our research equipment. I spend a lot of my time here carrying out various experiments on the clams. I don't want to admit how much time I spend in this room, but it's quite a bit. The flashing of a disco clam is so bright that people often mistake it for bioluminescence but the flashing is actually the result of reflective tissue. The tissue in question is a very thin strip along the edge of the mantle. That's where you see the flashing. That tissue actually has two very distinct sides. One side is very, very reflective, almost like a mirror, and it's filled with very small nanospheres, and the other side doesn't have any spheres. When we examine the movement of the tissue, we see that it moves those two sides back and forth about two or three times a second, so that it looks like it's flashing. These nanospheres are made of silica, which has a high refractive index and serves as a great reflector. Without these silica nanospheres, there'd be no disco and disco clam. So one really interesting question that we came upon was where this silica is coming from that the clams are using to reflect. Now there are different sources of silica in the ocean, but one source are diatoms. Diatoms are a small type of marine plankton, and their shells, or what we call frustules, are actually composed of silica. This is a specific strain of diatom that's from Indonesia. However, they're very small. They're about four to 30 microns, so there could easily be 100,000 in here. But they're very hard to see. To test whether or not diatoms are supplying silica to disco clams, follow these simple instructions. Step one, place your diatoms in a filter like this. Step two, get your hands on some silane. Silane is a fluorescent dye that bonds to silica. When you wash it over the diatoms, it will adhere to their shells. Step three, flush out the excess silane with salt water. Step four, feed the diatoms to your disco clam. Step five, to obtain a tissue sample, dissect the clam. Now that you have your tissue sample, you can view it under a microscope. If the clams really are absorbing the silica into their tissue, then the silane-infused diatoms should be easy to spot. Unfortunately, in this instance, the results were inconclusive, but that doesn't phase Lindsay one bit. The research in itself is just incredibly interesting. This is an organism that no one really knew about or had studied at all in the ocean. And something as interesting as this being the only one of its kind, it's sort of a phylogenetic anomaly, and I think it's definitely worth studying. For Science Friday, I'm Christian Baker.